Hi again, everyone. And what is going to be the final time, really, after 50 episodes, episode 51, I can say for the final time, welcome to a brand new episode of Dead Men Talk. And when I, I knew that I was going to make this the last episode, you know, I had a very, very, very short list of people that I wanted in the finale. And I'm so glad to say that the top guy on there is here with me today. Um, someone who is, is not only been, he's been part of my journey as a writer. He's, he's, he was involved in one of my early episodes for Dead Men Talk. Um, not just, you know, a colleague, acquaintance, a friend as well. Dave Jackson, welcome back to Dead Men Talk. How Thank you, you, buddy. Nice to see you again. And you, and you, we were just saying, yeah. you know, two, two, two and a half years. It's a long, not, not, you know, we've, we've, we've communicated in between that but you know, right. two, two and a half years since we actually like spoke like this and uh a uh a, a lot of ground to cover really i know you know we've both yeah. been very very busy but sort of how has life been treating you in that time sir life is busy <laughs> um <laughs> playing music <laughs> and doing the audiobook work and the occasional commercial mm. now and then it's uh it's it's all i can handle really Right. One more thing, and I'll just explode <laughs> <laughs> like and, a Spinal Tap drummer. One <laughs> interesting picture, and that would suit you quite well. Even that image, I think, to be honest <laughs> with you. But I mean, for for people who so, so let's just, just lay the foundations. I'm, you know, we won't go through your whole story again. If anybody wants after this, you know, to catch up on that, there's a whole episode where we go down a few rabbit holes a couple of years ago, early on. But let's just show off some hardware, shall we? Uh, people will, whether they do at the minute, they will after this, they'll know you as the voice of this great book here by a great writer who doesn't get all the recognition he deserves, I think. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, a Necessary End, written by yours truly. Um, a couple of years ago, we met through uh, you kindly um, bringing my book to life, really, as, as the audio book. And um, our, our last conversation was really sort of up to that point. And, you know, it's, it's been slap bang in the middle of COVID as well, you know, and it was a, this world was a very strange time. So kind of picking up from there, to be honest, I mean, your audio book work, for, firstly, has, has really taken off since a necessary end. Not that I'm taking any kind of credit for that whatsoever, but just kind of give us a rundown of what you've been involved in. Well, it started strong because your book was... I mean, dude, it's one of my favorites, and I, I'm not even, I'm not lying about that. I mean, I read it, I read the audition, I thought, oh, I got to get this. I have to get this book. <clears throat> and I sent, I sent the audition in, and you disappeared for a while. I thought, oh, man, I want that one. So I think I bugged you a little bit until you agreed. Yeah, to we just, we just literally, it was a, it was a cross wire somewhere. You thought I had, you know, kind of ditched you before giving you a chance. It wasn't like that at all. That's so. Well, I, I did it. I, and <laughs> I, man, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I mean, I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen in the next chapter. That's rare. It's fun. No, 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 no. It was, it was fantastic. I think it was, it was well, I heard your audition and you were the one that I wanted. So, you know, I did have others that came in for it. Um, and it was perfect. You know, I couldn't have asked for anything better. I mean, some of the, some of the things you did, the characters you, the way you brought them to life was even better. It's cliche better than I heard them in my head when I was writing it. So it's fantastic. So, um, so that, that kind of, okay. So my book kind of laid the groundwork. What happened then, you know, audio, where did your audio book career take you? Well, it started there. And I'm surprised you say that about <clears throat> your characters, because when I read what was on the page, I, it's just like, I, I know exactly who this person is. I mean, it, it instantly, the characters were so, well defined thank you um i just i just went with what was in my head and i'm glad you liked it so much and everybody who's who's listened to it you know it really gave me a nice foothold that was my first book right there and i really and the script was so good i man i just wanted it really bad and then i did that one and everyone was really happy with it impressed with it it took me forever which I apologize for, but you know what, that, that was the first one. And I was just learning the, um, the recording system. Hmm. And now I'm about 15, 20 books in, and now I know a lot of 
tricks okay. to get some silence out of, you know, I had to search everywhere to figure out, uh, and just online, mm. how do I make this smoother, you know, mm. th- get rid of some clicks. And I have a lot of mouth noise. I, I, I have a, I do. What's that? I, I, I have a lot of that when I, <clears throat> when I go back and edit these, particularly the audio bit, I'm forever taking these little clicks and ticks and whatever out that I hate. And yeah. it's just, you know, I never know I'm doing it half the time. It's really, it's, it's tough. The editing part is mm. by far the hardest part. Um, and I have a, uh, a steel plate in my face. My, uh, my lip from here over is numb. I got smashed by a, a dude. I've got metal all through my body. I've got metal in my foot, metal in my leg, a, a steel bracket in my neck, a titanium shoulder, uh, a, uh, <laughs> a cheekbone made of some kind of You're a bionic man then this is a story that i i know you shared with me i kind of knew about it anyway you told me before but you shared this with me after we finished recording last time oh really which, that's why it... yeah which you know for, for me I, I don't necessarily want to broadcast it. it's up to you if you want to tell the story but it was such a what's just weird because there's not yeah. much of me left really <laughs> no, I mean, quite. exactly so it's like if i die just throw <laughs> me in the recycle bin i don't even <laughs> Don't even bother burying me, but it's just then. And I tell you, ever since I got, I was walking down the road, I heard some something coming behind me, and I turned around real fast, and a truck slammed into me and bashed my face into a, a pickup truck, mm. and um, went to the hospital, uh, smashed my uh, septum there, my uh, my uh, my eye sockets. This eye really, I still have to wear a patch sometimes. Right. You know what? You don't look cool. You don't think my friends are like, oh man, no, you could probably rock that, <laughs> that patch. I'm like, no, yeah. you don't look, you don't look like Snake Plissken. You don't look <laughs> like a cool pirate. You look like an idiot walking around the, the grocery store trying to find what you're looking for. You know, at least I look like, a. I mean, maybe somebody else could rock it. I cannot. I look like an idiot, but I think it you, doesn't, my eye is kind of goofed up. Can, and this you, lip is numb. And sometimes if I, if I work too long or I try to speak too fast, it's yeah. like driving with a flat tire, right. you know, so it is what it is. My skull was broke. Some would say it still is broke, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, just all kinds of, I just, and I'm always just in the wrong place at the wrong time getting right. hit. And... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was a, it's a, it's a fantastic story that you, are able to tell i think you know too often these things happen and, and unfortunately it, it ends a lot worse and you know the fact that you're still here is, is testament to it yeah well right. the doctor said if if i wouldn't have turned around hmm. if he'd hit me from behind i could have been easily that. killed by that yeah. because the back of your head i guess is a lot worse but hmm. um i'm it's a miracle i didn't lose any teeth or anything that'd be a that's a whole different yeah. mess you got to deal with so it's like i got yeah. very lucky um Bless you, and man. i you know walked away from that one yeah so it makes it you got other challenges when it comes to i mean obviously as a, a musician and a singer as well does that do you, do you find that affects you then or are there certain things you do where it doesn't actually you don't notice it as much? you know what not so much because um the music is loud and heavy and mm. you know it's it's the nuances of the audio recordings yeah, that yeah. um you really and even music uh the music's going you can't really hear you mm-hmm. know some of the stuff but boy when it's just you and yeah. a book you're reading you know yeah. it, it'll bite you so it's 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 been difficult but uh but yeah i uh i went from your book and i after i did your book i started getting some offers cool. and uh i did a couple of books not great okay. i was like <laughs> oh man i hit the pinnacle right off the bat and then the bottom <laughs> came out uh, but I did. Uh, I won't get you to name those. Don't worry. I think that's a bit. That's no, a bit I don't. I don't. Say. I don't. Ta- I don't. No. I'm not going to say which ones I didn't really. You know. That's fine. But it was a learning experience. Like mm-hmm. after your first one, you want to keep going. So I, I took yeah. whatever I could get, and and I kept thinking, boy, these aren't very good. And then a, uh, a guy, Ian Spiegel Blum, asked me to do a dragon book. Okay. Uh, just a whole another fantasy world. And it was really, really good. And uh, I thought, oh, thank goodness, something good. And I c- could come up with these character voices and stuff. Mm. So then after that, I just went back into uh, the commercials and stuff. I got real busy with um, 
I think a couple of video games and stuff. And then, uh, then uh, I auditioned for MR Forbes. And MR Forbes is a really hot shot sci yeah. science fiction author. Yeah. And wow, his stuff is really good. So I've been blessed that I've had some really good books to read. Mm -hmm. And MR Forbes, the problem with him is he's so fast. Man, right. he's putting out a book every uh, week or two. And I'm like, what? How do you do that? <laughs> I that's, kind of, that's the kind of writer, in a way, in equal measure, inspires me and makes me sick at the same time because I can't do that. You know, I've got, I've got books that are half written from before COVID that I still have because I've found, I found the whole, that, this whole time really, really difficult. But other people have found it such, you know, it's almost like they just purge books through something like that. Well, you know, I was reading something about Stephen King, and he said he writes like 15 pages a day, and that's it. Right. And I'm like, how? Wait a minute now. <laughs> and I think uh, Michael Forbes is kind of the same way. I, he mm. writes faster than I can read. And plus, <laughs> I'm kind of, like I say, I'm kind of slow anyway. I, I try to act out everything. Yeah, yeah. I try to come up with a character and act those parts out. Mm. I found out I'm a pretty decent actor. So I never knew. And so I try to put that in there and it makes it, it makes it so much more enjoyable to listen mm -hmm. to because I've heard some audiobooks, and the guy just reads the book and he just says, and then, yeah. and then they went to the beach and it was all a happy day. And I'm like, Oh dude, it's no, like a text come book. on, put yeah. some, emote something in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and the MR Forbes stuff is real. It's a real rich universe. Cool. So it just, it, it, uh, kind of pushes me to to act these out and i know i i am frustrated i'm i know i can be frustrating with my speed because like i say i'm a little bit slow yeah. and dude last time i got covid <laughs> i mean this time about i got about a month a little over a month ago i got covid right so now i'm about two weeks behind on this new book uh, and it's the it's uh the sheriff three which is his main character the sheriff Okay. And everybody's clamoring for it. And I, I, man, I'm just working, working all day, all night trying to get this thing out. But I lost two weeks because of the COVID. That's, that's and huge. It hurt, you know, when, it when was hard. Yeah, I mean, that, that can be a substantial chunk, I can imagine, when you're working on something like that. That's a, that's a substantial amount of time. Um, and I couldn't world. even talk. Yeah, it was uh, rough, man. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a good enough reason, you know. Uh, you, you, nobody can... Nobody can can blame you for, for you know it's still around you know and I think people are very still still very accepting of the impact it's still having so at least at least it was that and not like you know I suppose a common cold or something like yeah you can say the big one took you down kind of thing. Well, I yeah. I had COVID once before and it, it was bad. Mm. This one, I thought it was supposed to be a little easier the next time. Mm. No, man, I was I, I was that. laying in bed thinking I can understand how this could kill someone. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah very difficult you know yeah i have heard that i did these different strains that have been coming out and they just seem to be you know touch wood i've not had i think it's, it's been at least a year i think since my last bout with it and i think that was the probably worst for me it's, it's just getting stronger now i mean people are saying it's it's no longer around it's no longer a threat yeah fine it's probably not seeing people off quite like it did but it's still when you get well, it it's if, if you're unlucky enough to get it yeah, you realize how bad it is, and I, Absolutely. I work a, I, I have another job where I, I just work for a, a company. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of the videos I post on Facebook. Jason Epperson yes. at Epic Films, yeah. he makes these great films, and um, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of an employee with him. Okay, so I just do whatever needs done, mm. and uh, of course, when I got sick, they got, re you know, they needed a lot, and I, yeah. I finally had to call them and say this is my voice and he <laughs> says take a couple of days off <laughs> yeah yeah we don't want that we don't want that oh bless you no i mean i i i really quite almost proud in a way that, that i was able to sort of start that kind of journey the audiobook journey going for you um you know, like I say, I, I couldn't have asked for anything better with this book. And just flash it up again. I don't do this enough, but I think that's that's the problem <laughs> with having something like this and being being an author. We don't promote ourselves very well. But there you go. This is actually the only that I know of, the only paperback copy of this actually, I think, in existence because I got this and then I think I took the paperbacks off sale. So 
If wow. anyone wants one, this one's worth a bit. Yeah. Um, it's a great book, man. I, and I'm not just... I I loved every chapter of that book. I couldn't wait to see what was happening. Oh, I just bought your uh, children's book. Oh, yeah. No, thank you for that I, as well. Yeah. Yeah, I just got it. I was going to take a picture and post it. And, <laughs> you know, oh, looking at it. Bless you. Oh, I'll still do that. I love pictures. That's yeah, like good, that. man. Yeah. yeah, I will. I will. It's really good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, I guess it's been a couple of years since I've done anything. I think I almost, I, I was in, I, I was completely in two different worlds when I was writing the necessary end. I was writing horror and then I had this kids book coming in. And I think I got to that point. And I'm like, I, I really don't know where I'm going now. Just I, don't, I don't get know. them mixed up, man. You no, know. quite. <laughs> Have a lot of little Absolutely. kids hiding under their beds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, I'm going to read this. It doesn't rhyme much, but hey, you know. Um, <laughs> one of the things I said I was going to do when I had you on here, to myself, um, is I was, I, I've, I've got a, I've not mentioned this to you, I don't think. Anyway, I've got, I've got a proposal for you, not to put you on the spot because we're on camera. Feel free to shoot me down. Um, I've got... Three books that you won't have probably seen at all. Okay. Yeah. This is this is this is my Wildermore Apocalypse. This is what I started with. This one here yeah. was was what got the ball rolling. Okay. Um, quick story. I, I've had it out there with a few different publishers. Um, I took the rights back to them probably about six months ago from the last publisher I had. And as we were recording, literally a couple of nights ago, I have put Acolyte back out in the world in the kingdom nice. world i'm now publishing i'm publishing them under my I'm, I'm resurrecting my publishing name and i'm publishing back under myself great when there's a gap in your diary i need audiobooks for these three and i, I know a guy i know i was gonna say <laughs> i rather than put this out to tender i if there was only one person that i would want to do these so you know whenever i would love to i would love thank to. you cool so whenever your diary permits let me know and i'll start setting it up Hey man, I'll um, make time. So there you go. So you know, and for this, this one here, Gods and Insects, was only out. Actually, this is the this is the culmination of the trilogy. This was only out for six months, and then I pulled it, went to another publisher who who unfortunately didn't release it. So this hasn't been seen for four years. So wow, dude. by the time I'm hoping, by the time this goes out, you know, not long after, we can between us, we can unleash this whole oh, story boy. on people's ears as well. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Christmas present. Merry Christmas for me. Gotta finish this sheriff first. Oh, my oh I've been, no, no, no. That's right. No, literally. Oh, I, my gosh. Everybody's. <laughs> come on. Where is it? Where? <laughs> hey, that's why I say, you know, whenever it suits you, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not in a, a, a rush. I want to get it done, but I want it to be done right. And I want it to be done with you. So, you know, um, that is, that is there waiting for you whenever you want to do it. So, hey, I'm, I love it, man. I love it. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'll happily send you the books over as well so you can read them first. Because you might read them and okay. think, actually, no, I don't want to put my name to that. So, which is fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on now. I know better than that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, um, I, I'm just trying to think what else uh, I know has been going on with you the, the last couple of years. Your, your music, we kind of touched on it last time a little bit, I think, that we spoke. But just kind of give, you know, pe just remind people sort of your musical background. Because this way surpasses your your sort of um your voice open your audiobook work you know this goes back quite a long time yeah um, it's it's something i've i've been doing since i was too young to get into the clubs i was playing in <laughs> you know i was a teenager playing grown-up clubs uh but i guess if you know you can play pretty good or sing they just shut your their eyes to your absolutely. age yeah and just go ahead and play kid yeah and then Vamoose. <laughs> so I, I, I did that for a long time and uh, never got famous at it. Got really close there for a, for a while, mm. but just couldn't get over that hump. Um, my bass player, Al McKenzie, plays in Firehouse. You know them. Yeah. They've had a lot of, lot of hits. Um, and uh, we did that. That was called Fox, the Mighty Fox. We did that for a long time. Played everywhere in the States pretty much just traveled and toured our brains out, which explains a lot of why we're all brainless <laughs> there now. You go. There you go. And uh, then I, I really like, um, like punk rock, uh, metal, you know, mm. typo negative, the misfits, the Ramones, yeah. these kind of bands, ghost. I yeah. love these kind of bands, you know, 
And uh, I thought, I, I don't, and I never was crazy about the hair metal. I like Dokken and Rat. Okay. And then, yeah. and then a little here, little there. Like Wasp came through town uh, last week, and my friends all went to see Wasp. I was working. Oh, I couldn't no. go. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so I hard. like Wasp, too. I mean, some, some things. But uh, for the most part, I'm more of a more of a punk rock uh, mm -hmm. okay. guy. And I, I even like goth and things, you know, if yeah. it sounds creepy and cool. But I also like it memorable. Yeah. I like that big chorus where when you're done, you just heard the song. You don't have to say, what was that song called? You know, yeah. you already know what it's called because I yeah. it, it was said a lot of times. And yeah. I know um, the merch girl <laughs> for my band, October Rising, sent you some music yes and i i keep saying i'm gonna send it to you and it, you know i just get so yeah don't worry about it. don't worry chris yeah. postage is very expensive i don't know what to tell you man yeah no i can appreciate that that's fine <laughs> whenever anyone from over your part of the world says just give me your address i'll send you something i'm a bit okay are you sure but yeah well, no, don't worry mate mine is just i just keep getting I just keep forgetting because I'm, you know, got so much going on, but exactly. I'll I, I, will, you. I will. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, busted. I can't, I don't know what to don't say. Worry for about myself. It. Don't worry. And the, the, the great thing was, is when she sent me the link, she, she put me onto the band. It, I put, it was probably about a month later. I didn't even realize it was you. Oh. This is what, this is what's fantastic is that she, I don't think, you know, maybe I missed the message. She never actually said, this is Dave's band or whatever. She just she just said you'll love this band. So I was like, yeah. And it was cool. October Rising. It was, yeah. Oh. So I was like, and I was listening to it. It was my next day. I was cleaning the house. I always have music on. I have a, a, a random album playlist, whatever going, uh, whatever room I'm in. And I just travel around the house with um, with October Rising playing, and I loved it. It was great. Even my kids, because it's it's similar to that kind of yes, anything relating to Halloween. My little right. boy absolutely loves anyway. So yeah, yeah, when he was hearing some of the lyrics come out, and then yeah, I think you sent me the news, uh, like a, a, a an article write up, and yeah. I read it. and I was like, how did I not put two and two together? So you know, I wasn't just yeah. appreciating it because I knew it was you. It was, I had no idea. It was just good. Yeah, it's great. Well, I will get them over to you. Don't worry. Don't I, worry about I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can probably bring them over I... yourself one day. So yeah, just be yeah. With it. Hey, I would love to come back. Um, I always feel good going back to England. All I mean, I it's hard for me to leave. It just feels like home, you know. Yeah. Um, but the weirdest thing that ever happened was I had to get, like I say, some metal put in me. As, yeah. I'm always getting some new steel plate or something in there. But I was I was getting some surgery on my leg. And uh, I was laying in the operating room before they give mm -hmm. you the drug to knock you out. Yeah. And I kept thinking, what is this? What's it? What are they playing? And I realized they were playing October Rising <laughs> through the speakers while they're getting ready to put me under. That's fantastic. And the doctor, I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and the doctor said, actually, my wife bought the CD. She's a fan. And I said, oh, oh OK. And I thought. <laughs> please turn this off if this is the last thing i ever hear in the <laughs> i don't want to die with this is the last thing i ever hear <laughs> oh i don't know you should be proud of it you should be proud of it. So <laughs> how, how did that all start then just you know just just to ex um explain the, the concept of october rising and sort of how it began well i wanted to do something theatrical that fit the music um and, you know, we're just, you're always looking, and I, I always, like I say, I always love bands like that, that have had mm. an image. Um, I have a friend that accuses me, oh, you just like bands that ha have an image. That's not true. Mm. I, I just think bands with an image are a little cooler. Yeah. You know, if you have the music and no image, it's, hey, I'll listen to it. Yeah. But it's really fun if it, if it's, the okay. music's good and you have an image. So Absolutely. it kind of stemmed from something like that. I just, uh. You know, when grunge hit and everybody was just standing on stage in big bell-bottom jeans and uh, flannel shirts, and I got nothing wrong, you know, against that. No. But the gloomy music and the, yeah. the flannel and the jeans, I'm like, oh, I got it. I want to hear the Ramones or something or something it's, or the Beach Boys. I don't want to. I don't want to be depressed, man. No, you know? it's got a lifespan, doesn't it? Really, you can only go so far in the certain moods with that. Yeah. Yeah. When when did it yeah. start? When did when did the October Rising begin? How long have you been doing? Well, I recorded those in 
2010 ish. Okay. And, uh, but I still, you know, I'm still rec- recording, yeah. you know, but, uh, the bass player had to leave town or something and, and then he died and couldn't, didn't never came back. Right. <laughs> but I guess he couldn't come back. No. So, uh, just a whole lot of life happened and death mm. and the band never, we were a very functional band as far as recording and writing, mm. but just couldn't get out onto a stage anywhere mm. uh, because it was only three of us and we didn't have a drummer. I'm always having drummer issues. <laughs> uh, my son is a drummer and he's supposed to be, his drum teacher said, man, this kid is good. He's mm. so shy. His name is Gunner and he's so shy. Uh, I'm like if he could get over that shyness i'd put him in my band know, right absolutely. now you know yeah, yeah. That's, that's a shame isn't it? and just you know at some point you probably just overcome that and not go back it's yeah. just trying to get to that yeah he's that young he's it? he's a teenager and you know he'll okay. gain some confidence and he has confidence in a lot of things but yeah. uh he doesn't really uh he has no desire to get on a stage and play and okay. you know if that changes cool if it doesn't hey man that's why they have studio musicians you know yeah yeah true 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 the unsung heroes back in the recording studio you yeah know? not enough is said about them i think the more i i <clears throat> i never used to take note of these you know you only really listen to what's what's coming out of the speakers and then as i've got older a new appreciation for those that actually go into making these things that you you, you don't really hear about so yeah there's a lot of a lot of really uh, not well known, but very respected mm. musicians who just uh, you know, you know they're in the background, mm. they play, they're on hit albums. You'll yeah. you'll never see their you face. Never know. So. No. no, yeah. So, so. <clears throat> getting getting back out, obviously, you know, when we spoke a couple of years ago, the world was a scary place, all locked down and, and and whatever. And getting back out there to 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 play music, have you got got a chance to do that over the last? sort of, I don't know, year or so? We've played uh, quite a bit through October up mm-hmm. here. There's a haunted schoolhouse here in uh, in the town I live in, and it's like one of the oldest. It might be the oldest in the States. Oh, wow. It's It came out in the 70s, like long ago. Yeah. And uh, I remember going to it when I was a kid and thinking, and just scaring me to death. Well, it's, it's this big old schoolhouse. The whole thing they've turned into a haunted house, floor by floor. Wow, okay, cool. And uh, so we approached them about playing there because we'd be perfect for that, you yeah. know, yeah. a band of the undead uh, <laughs> army men. That's uh, yeah. So we, we, we just played the entire time. And guess what? I got the COVID. I missed like four years. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to play all October, and I got sick and – had to shut some of it down, but it was pretty successful. A lot of newspapers yeah. writing up, a lot of new fans, and that's basically what you, that's you know, brilliant. that's what it's all about. So absolutely. And do you? It was think, tough. Do, but do you, do you think this is nature's way of getting you to slow down for just a few days? It's like, you know, Dave's not had a rest in God knows when. You know, he's doing this and he's doing that and he's doing it at the same time. For God's sake, just stop i don't know i hope or did, not. Or did you just you know want to raise a middle finger to it and say well i i would i would think well maybe there is something to that maybe it is god just saying slow down but mm. i'm not you know when i'm laying there sick i'm i'm not really getting much rest yeah. anyway so no that's very true that's very true so how how do you how do you keep it how do you keep it all going you know all these different projects and that you just line them up and once you're done with one you move on to the next or you've got all these kind of things overlapping all over the place well the the books i try to do one at a time Mm -hmm. i i know i would get i would get confused and mixed up with the characters even one book sometimes i have to go back and listen what voice did i give this character and try to Mm -hmm. you know i I have to search it out and recreate it because sometimes an author will use a character in the beginning of the book you won't see him again until later oh what was I doing? Yeah, you know. Or in this book, there's a, a character named Thomas that I it was a very small part in a book before that, and I had to go back and remember what was Thomas's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so if I did more than one book at a time, I'd really get mixed up, and I yeah, I know yeah. I I would just smoke would pour out of my ears, you know. <laughs> uh, 
I ha I can do that a little bit with music. I can, you know, kind of have okay. half a song here and some parts there, yeah. but this stuff. And then, uh, like I say, I work, uh, I get up every morning, like a regular guy, I get up at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning mm. and I have coffee. And then I come down to the studio here in the, my basement and I start working and mm. I just work until, you know, it's time to quit. And then yeah. some, sometimes I'll have to, after dinner, like you're doing tonight, mm. I'll have to, you know, go back and, Do you know, yeah. eat dinner, say hello and come back downstairs and work. But that's, hey. If you, it's it's you know it's a good problem to have it is and i think if you're enjoying what you're doing and, and you've got a lot of things inspiring you and you're, you're and you're doing quality job like you are it makes it a lot worth a lot more worth it doesn't it than well anything yeah. artistic you know yeah you're an artist yeah. it's it's kind of in your blood you know um yeah. i just uh life without some sort of art would just be just oh can you even imagine no. you know no. I, it would just be uh, hideous to me. Right. And, you know, and uh, I have kids that are becoming artists and it's, it's nice. You know, my daughter is, you know, uh, an artist of the nth degree. She's like incredible. I'd like to get her involved in some of, now I'm meeting video game creators and things. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. she just, she can draw like you can't believe, like this anime style that's her oh, own. Okay. Yeah, cool, cool. And it's really amazing. She drew a, a self portrait of herself and it hung in the mayor's office in town because it was so good. Wow. I, I had to go, I, I, I never saw it. I had to go drive there to, and go into the mayor's <laughs> office to see the picture. <laughs> and it was really incredible. It looks just like her. I'm like, how did you do that? And then my wow. other daughter is a writer, like, which would, you know, she was writing stuff at like 10 years old that sounded like a young adult like somebody in wow. college and i thought wait a minute you're like 10 11 and in my drummer and my drummer's son and musician yeah. so it's nice to see that they've you know embraced the arts of some type and then and, and they're all really good you know you so think, that makes it even it's... more fun you know wait to see what happens with these guys what do you think it is then here we go it's a philosophical question nature nurture you know the whole artistic thing if you have that where you know you obviously are yourself and you found that your kids have been is that something they've got naturally from you or something you've exposed them to you know what, what do you reckon it is you know what i i've thought about this quite a bit and it's it's tough it's probably a combination of the two um but i always think about say the guy who's at the garage mm. changing your tires yeah and he's got somewhere in his head, he's got perfect pitch, but nobody mm. knows. Nobody yeah. even knows it. And he and he might not even know. And it's just the music was never introduced to him. You know, yeah. the guy could be the next Eddie Van Halen or Mozart, and he's putting tires on your on your car yeah. because he wasn't exposed to it or he wasn't kind of nudged in the right direction. And I would never push no. my kids into it because music was very difficult and mm. in a lot of ways you know, it makes for a harder life, you know, yeah. but uh, I don't ever want to push them, but the little nudge and to see them kind of fly yeah. is, is really nice. But I don't know the answer to your question. <laughs> that's a toughie. And I think it's a combination of both. I, I would guess. I've always thought that, you know, I, I hear this if, about other things, you know, the, the whole nature nurture thing fascinates me because, you know, you see it even with, with twins, I've got twins are perfect breeding ground to see things like this and try to prove this because it's like okay we bring them up the same way but eventually they're going to go off in their own directions you know what are they taking from us chemically or what are they taking from us you know environmentally from how we brought them up but you know it's going to be different things and i think that's i don't know yeah i i've never believed it's one or the other i think you can't have one without the other sort of thing i think you're right yeah, yeah. because so. uh and then you'll you'll get that oddball who just out of nowhere turns into this yeah you know his parents are you know a, a teacher and one's a you know something else and yeah. then this kid is like an amazing you know artist of some yeah. sort you know yeah. musician or a writer and you're like how where'd that come from you know yeah. just every now and then you get that little that little burst there and yeah yeah somebody appears you're like what where'd you come from <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. You know what? I think this is this is a perfect little little thing. We'll start to wrap up in a minute. I think this is a perfect way to bring this to a close. Not only this episode, but 
of the whole series, what I've been trying to do, you know, for a lot of this, you know, five seasons of Dead Men Talk, it started off as something quite different than it ended up with. It was, it started off as a vessel for me to talk about what inspired me, you know, what was behind all of my stories, because I love talking about inspiration and influences and, and getting other people's takes. This is why people started coming on the show because I was interested in their own, what inspired them. And I think bringing it round to here, like almost the next generation for you, you know, yeah. seeing what you've done, how that's impacted. And that's probably a, my main motive behind all of this is, is eventually to show my kids, you know, you can, yeah. you can do this. My wife's always saying that, you know, regardless of if I'm, if I'm getting depressed about, you know, viewership, listenership, book sales, anything like that. She's like, at least you've shown your kids you can do something you want to do regardless. Yeah. And you know, my mom was a, a singer, a musician. And, you know, and it, it's, 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 you know, you, you do a lot for your kids, man. Yeah. You do, you do whatever, you know, yeah. and you, you know, yeah. whatever they need, you, you do yeah. it and you, you hope it inspires them. Absolutely. Hope. Absolutely. And, and it's it's meeting people like yourself through this journey. You know, I know I knew you before I started podcasting, but this podcast has really brought me full circle. I started off talking about my first book, you know, Acolyte and, and how that came about. And lo and behold, what have we been talking about? You know, I've come full circle and I've 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 just recently re-released this book. I've kind of fallen back in love with what writing brought me a few years ago. Um what lies beyond this podcast hopefully will result in you know more well, books can't, to come and stuff so i can't wait to see what goes on inside your head i bet <laughs> i bet you know i think about i thought i wonder when chris was little if he was either like had a pet tarantula or he was terrified it's got to be one or the other it was you know it was it would be the latter yeah i mean that is um, um, so yeah um lifting the lid as it were one of the stories in in and so yeah and that's the one that i think out of everything I've written that people go back to is a media. And that was the second story I think I ever wrote, uh, you know, after my, um, my, my first novel. And that was born completely out of fear. That was going back to how spiders used to make me feel as a kid. And I was like, the only way I can confront this is I've got to talk about them in great detail and make them as scary as possible. And I've got to live that while I'm writing that book. So it's, it's one great way of how, yeah, our own fears can manifest into something. Well, now I'm afraid of spiders. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's and that is what I've said to a few others who've said the same. My job is done. So, <laughs> Dave, this has been this has been fantastic. I couldn't think of a, you know a better way to sign off on this whole kind of experience that this series has been. And I'm, I'm so glad to have you back on. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with you again. You know, let's get you know the Wildermore books out there whenever is convenient like i say absolutely no rush but you know you're the guy that i want to be oh i want to <laughs> so i'll i'll send i'll send you the first one over have a have a read whenever you can and see what you think and we'll go from there okay. so, and so. i'll send you some music i promised <laughs> so man weird. i don't know hey you know I have no excuse one, one way or the other either you come over here or we're planning a trip over there at some point you know i'd love for you man i would love for you guys to come over and hang out That'd be cool, man. Kind of see, kind of see the other side of the pond. Did you see where the some lady now? Now Charles is the king. Mm -hmm. Some lady in a crowd just kissed him. Did you see that? No, I didn't. <laughs> but I was watching TV. I was with some friends, and we were watching, you know, yeah. the TV. And 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 now King Charles is meeting meeting people. Yeah. And this lady just gave him a big old smooch, there and I go. thought, my of course, I'm horrified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my friends what's the big deal i'm like you can't kiss royalty man you i was gonna say sort of a few hundred i've been getting big into like the tudor history lately and um yeah you would have done that back then you would have lost your head most probably um, yeah yeah it's it's all a bit comical now though i i yeah i kind of look at the royal family as more of a soap opera than actual but anyway i'll probably lose my head for that if anyone sees this but there you go opinions have we all i don't know man. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a crazy place but you know one way or the other yes we will we'll we'll, we'll bring down the veil you know of uh zoom at some point it's right great. okay but, yes, and dave thank you so much all the best with everything you know you've got a lot going on um Same to you, I, brother. I urge everyone out there to to look for your audio books you know start with the necessary ends great place to start obviously um but check out everything else october 
October Rising, everything that you've done, really. I mean, is, is any of the Fox material out there or, or is, you know, to listen to? Have you got anything out there that people can stream of that? Or Well, I think pretty much everything's on Audible. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I know that the Ian Spiegel Blum book, uh, he might have a lockdown on that. But uh, on my Facebook thing, there'll be a, I only do, my Facebook thing is mostly all professional stuff. Yeah, I don't cool. want to, I don't want to. So I, I'm going to have to get a website very soon that just has, like, I've got some cartoons out there that are really funny and good. They won't release them. And I signed a, a non-disclosure. I can't, oh, I can't yeah. post those. Yeah. I keep hoping they'll come out because they're really funny. They're one's two fish in a goldfish bowl. And you think, well, how much trouble could two fish bowl? Oh. <laughs> and they're, they're wanting me to that. sound like Ray Romano. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like Snuffle Up, I guess. You know, I don't know. He talks like, hey, you know. Oh, we've got to see those. Got to see <laughs> but those. It's, it's fun. And I'm in a play called Mephisto. It's a musical, a heavy metal musical. I and I start as an old man. And I'm doing the total Ephraim Courtney voice. <laughs> oh, there you go. And, oh. and then he makes a deal with the devil or the devil's minion, Mephisto. Yeah. And then suddenly I'm a young man. And, you know, I, I of course, I lose in the end. My ah. character, you know, it goes from an old man to a young man. Yeah. Right. And he loses everything. You can't ever, you can never beat the devil. So, but it's oh. a cool play. It's, oh, it's a musical. And it's, cool. uh, we're trying to get it off the ground right now. And a recording music and some of that's on there as well. So there you go. it's, it's just, fun, man. After everything else we've been talking about, how busy you are, you just just drop that in right at the end. So you know, you you got you got stuff coming out your ears, mate. But no, Dave, you know, uh, but yeah, anyone get out there, check out Dave's audio books, right. um, music, everything that's out there. And okay. you know, obviously, we probably won't link up again on Dead Men Talk, but we will link up again and you know, keep your eyes peeled, everyone, for the next collaboration Absolutely, man. coming your way. Okay, right. mate. Take All it right, easy, Chris. bud. Cheers. See you, buddy. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to like, share, and hit the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep updated about all future shows.